We're going to start by diving into seven clear signs that the universe is aligning to bring you the rewards you've been waiting for. Understanding these signs can help you recognize when you're on the brink of a breakthrough, and it all begins with shifting your perception of reality. The first sign that you are about to receive a reward from the universe is a shift in your emotional state. As you get closer to your reward, you might notice a subtle but significant change in how you feel. This means you could experience moments of increased joy, peace, or excitement, even when things around you are still challenging. For example, you might feel an unexpected burst of happiness or a sense of calm during a stressful situation. This change in your emotions is a sign that you are aligning with a new frequency. Think of it like tuning a radio to a new station. When your emotions shift, it's like your body and mind are adjusting to a higher and better frequency that matches your desires and goals. It's your way of moving into a higher state of consciousness, one that is more in harmony with what you want to achieve. Our emotional state is very important when it comes to manifesting our reality. How we feel affects what we attract into our lives. When you feel good, you send out a powerful signal to the universe that you are ready and open to receive your desires. Your positive emotions act like a magnet, drawing in the things you want. For example, if you start feeling excited and optimistic about your goals, you are more likely to attract opportunities and experiences that align with those feelings. This emotional shift can sometimes be gentle and gradual, or it might come suddenly. It can happen during moments of reflection, when you're thinking about your goals and dreams, or even while you're simply going about your daily life. Regardless of how it happens, this shift is an important sign that you're on the right path. It shows that you are in tune with your higher self and that you are getting closer to your rewards. It's important to recognize and appreciate these changes in your emotional state. Pay attention to how you feel throughout your day and notice any new feelings of joy, peace, or excitement. Embrace these emotions as they come. They are guiding you toward the positive changes that are on their way. The second sign is an increase in synchronicities. Synchronicities are those meaningful coincidences that seem to pop up just when you need them. They might come in the form of meeting someone who has the answers you were seeking or encountering opportunities that align perfectly with your goals. These synchronicities are not random. They are signals from the universe confirming that you're on the right path. They are like little nudges from the universe, letting you know that things are aligning for you. Pay attention to these moments and trust that they are leading you toward your reward. The third sign that you're about to receive a reward from the universe is that you might notice old patterns in your life starting to dissolve. As you grow and change, the universe works to clear out old beliefs, habits, and situations that are no longer helping you. This clearing process means that things from your past, like outdated ways of thinking or unhelpful routines, are starting to disappear from your life. For example, you might find that certain relationships or situations that used to be a big part of your life are no longer fitting in with who you are becoming. Some people might drift away, or some situations might change in a way that causes them to end. This can feel a bit unsettling at first, but it is actually a positive sign that you are making space for new and better things. When old patterns are dissolving, it means that you are letting go of what no longer serves you. This makes room for new opportunities and experiences that are more aligned with your current goals and desires. It's like clearing out clutter from a room to make space for new useful items. Similarly, when you release the old, you create space in your life for new rewards and possibilities to come in. This process of letting go and clearing space can sometimes feel uncomfortable. Change can be challenging, and it's normal to feel a bit uneasy when familiar things start to shift. However, it's important to remember that this discomfort is part of the growth process. It means you are moving forward and making way for something better. Embracing these changes and trusting that they are necessary for your growth will help you stay positive and open to the new opportunities that are coming your way. 
The fourth sign that you're about to receive a reward from the universe is an increase in intuitive guidance. Intuition is like a special inner sense that helps you understand things without needing to think them through logically. When you're getting closer to your reward, your intuition becomes stronger and more active. This means you might start feeling a deeper sense of knowing or understanding about what to do next. You might experience this guidance in different ways. For instance, you could suddenly have new insights or ideas that come to you out of nowhere. These insights might give you a clear sense of direction, helping you see the next steps you need to take. Sometimes this guidance might come through your dreams. You might have dreams that seem to offer you important clues or answers to questions you've been asking. Your intuition acts like an inner compass that guides you toward your highest potential. It helps you make choices that are in line with what you truly want and need. When you're about to receive a reward, your intuition becomes more active and noticeable. It helps you make decisions that align with your desires and goals. For example, if you've been working towards a new job, you might suddenly feel a strong pull to apply for a particular position or to network with someone who can help you. This feeling of direction and clarity is a sign that you're on the right path. It's important to listen to your inner voice and trust the guidance it provides. Your intuition is there to help you navigate through life and to lead you toward the rewards you're about to receive. When you pay attention to these intuitive feelings, you're more likely to make choices that bring you closer to your goals. The fifth sign that you're about to receive a reward from the universe is experiencing an increased sense of resilience. This means that as you get closer to achieving your goals, you might notice that you are handling challenges and setbacks much better than before. Instead of feeling overwhelmed by difficulties, you start to feel empowered and capable of overcoming them. When you are on the verge of receiving a reward, your ability to bounce back from problems and stay strong is a clear sign that things are moving in the right direction. You might find that you're no longer easily discouraged when things don't go as planned. Instead, you become more resourceful and determined to find solutions. This feeling of resilience is not just about getting through tough times. It's also about growing stronger and more confident in yourself. For example, let's say you've been working hard on a project at work or school and suddenly you face unexpected obstacles. Instead of getting discouraged or giving up, you find new ways to tackle the problem. You might come up with creative solutions or seek help from others, and you feel more determined than ever to reach your goal. This increased ability to handle challenges is a sign that you're getting closer to the rewards you've been working for. This sense of resilience shows that you are becoming more aligned with your true self and your goals. It reflects your growing strength and confidence. As you move closer to achieving your desires, you are also becoming more in tune with who you are and what you want. Your increased resilience is a natural part of this process. It means that you are not just reacting to situations, but are actively managing and overcoming obstacles with a positive mindset. Embracing this newfound resilience is important because it indicates that the universe is preparing to reward you for your efforts. It's a sign that your hard work and determination are paying off. When you feel resilient, you are more likely to stay focused on your goals and continue pushing forward, even when things get tough. This positive attitude and inner strength help you stay on track and keep moving towards your desired outcomes. To make the most of this increased resilience, try to acknowledge and celebrate your progress. Reflect on how you've managed to handle challenges and what you've learned from them. This reflection can boost your confidence and help you see how far you've come. Remember, each challenge you overcome is a step closer to your goals, and your growing resilience is a sign that you are on the right path. The sixth sign that your big rewards are on the way is when you start to see your desires manifesting in small ways. This means you might notice little things happening that show you're moving closer to your larger goals. These small manifestations are like little previews of the bigger rewards that are coming to you. 
For example, if you've been working hard to achieve a big goal, you might start to see small successes along the way. Maybe you get a positive response from someone you reached out to, or you accomplish a minor task that gets you closer to your dream. These small victories might seem like just little steps, but they are actually very important. They are signs that your dreams and desires are starting to come to life. Think of these small manifestations as hints or clues that your bigger dreams are on their way. They show that what you've been working towards is starting to take shape. It's like when you're waiting for a big event and you see some smaller related events happening first. These smaller events are a way of showing you that the bigger event is getting closer. These signs are not just random coincidences. They are actually important messages from the universe that your efforts are making a difference. When you start to notice these small manifestations, it means that your energy and actions are starting to align with your desires. It's a positive sign that your hard work is paying off and that you're on the right path. It's important to celebrate these small successes. Even though they might seem minor compared to your ultimate goal, they are still important achievements. Celebrating these small victories helps you stay motivated and reminds you that progress is being made. It's easy to get discouraged if you only focus on the end goal, but acknowledging and enjoying these smaller successes keeps you encouraged and excited about your journey. Use these small manifestations as fuel to keep moving forward. They are evidence that you're heading in the right direction and that the universe is aligning with your desires. Each small step you achieve brings you closer to your larger goals. When you see these signs, it's a good time to reflect on what you've accomplished and to recognize that you're making progress. Remember that every big achievement is made up of many smaller steps these small manifestations are part of the process that leads to your larger rewards. By noticing and appreciating these small successes, you can maintain a positive attitude and continue working towards your goals with enthusiasm. The seventh sign that the universe is about to reward you is an overwhelming sense of gratitude. This feeling of thankfulness is not just about being polite or showing appreciation. It's a deep, heartfelt emotion that shows you're in perfect alignment with the universe's abundance. When you start to feel a profound sense of gratitude, it's a clear sign that you are close to receiving something wonderful. This gratitude is not just for the big things in your life, but for the small, everyday moments and blessings. You might find yourself feeling thankful for the people around you, for the simple pleasures, and even for the challenges that have helped you grow. This deep appreciation is like a signal to the universe that you are ready for more. Gratitude works like a key that opens the door to more blessings. When you focus on what you're grateful for, you create a positive energy that attracts even more good things into your life. It's like turning on a magnet that pulls in more of what you desire. This is because when you're thankful, you are aligning your energy with the frequency of abundance. You're telling the universe that you are not only happy with what you have, but also open to receiving even more. Imagine gratitude as a powerful force field around you. When you feel truly grateful, this force field starts to glow with positive energy. This energy is incredibly attractive. It draws in positive experiences, opportunities, and rewards from the universe. It's almost like the universe notices your grateful heart and responds by sending more good things your way. This feeling of gratitude can also help you stay grounded and focused on the present moment. Instead of worrying about what you don't have or what's missing, you concentrate on what you do have. This shift in focus helps you stay in a positive mindset, which is essential for manifesting your desires. When you're grateful, you stop focusing on lack and start seeing the abundance that already exists in your life. This change in perspective is crucial because it aligns your energy with the flow of abundance. You might also notice that when you're grateful, you start to see the world differently. Challenges and obstacles become opportunities for growth rather than roadblocks. This new perspective makes it easier to navigate through difficulties and stay optimistic about the future. 
As a result, you are more likely to attract positive outcomes and rewards. Gratitude is also a way to honor the process of your journey. It acknowledges all the hard work, effort, and perseverance you've put into reaching your goals. When you show appreciation for how far you've come, you build a positive relationship with yourself and the universe. This relationship is important because it helps you stay connected to the flow of abundance and keeps you aligned with your desires. In practice, cultivating gratitude can be as simple as keeping a gratitude journal. Write down three things you're thankful for each day. They don't have to be big or extraordinary. Even the small, everyday moments can make a difference. This daily practice helps you focus on the positive aspects of your life and reinforces your alignment with abundance. Recognizing these signs can help you understand that the universe is about to reward you. A shift in your emotional state, an increase in synchronicities, the dissolution of old patterns, heightened intuitive guidance, increased resilience, small manifestations, and an overwhelming sense of gratitude are all indicators that you are aligning with your desires. Embrace these signs and continue to cultivate a positive and open mindset. Trust in the process and know that the universe is conspiring to bring you the rewards you've been working towards. Your thoughts and emotions are powerful tools in man with me still. Now, if the body has been conditioned into the familiar past or the predictable future, and the body has become the mind of the past or the predictable future, would you agree? Then the body would say, what are you doing? And the body would say, listen, let's get you thinking like you've been thinking. 90% of the thoughts that we think on a daily basis are the same thoughts as the day before. So if you think that your thoughts have something to do with your destiny, and 90% of your thoughts are the same known thoughts that you're always thinking, then your life should stay the same because the same thoughts lead to the same choices. The same choices lead to the same behaviors. The same behaviors create the same experiences. The same experiences produce the same emotions. Those same emotions tend to influence the way we think, and our biology, our neurocircuitry, our neurochemistry, our hormones, and even our gene expression is equal to how we think, how we act, and how we feel. And how you think, how you act, and how you feel is called your personality, and your personality creates your personal reality. That's it. If you want to create a new personal reality, a new life, you're going to have to change your personality. And you've got to start thinking about what you've been thinking about and change it. You've got to become aware of your unconscious habits and behaviors, even how you speak. And you have to look at the emotions that you live by every single day and decide, do these emotions belong in my future? So many people try to create a new life as the same person. In order to create a new personal reality, you've got to change your personality. So the principle in neuroscience says that nerve cells that fire together, wire together. Thinking the same way, making the same choices, demonstrating the same actions, creating the same experiences that stamp the same networks of neurons into the same patterns, all for the familiar feeling called you. And you do that for 10 years in a row. Well, you're going to hardwire your brain into a very finite signature because you're firing and wiring that way. And that box in the brain, that becomes our personality, becomes our identity. And by the time we're 35 years old, for the most part, we've done something so many times that the body now knows how to do it as well as the mind. And that's a habit. So we have these unconscious programs of behaviors, automatic habits, redundant emotional reactions, hardwired beliefs, perceptions, attitudes that function just like a computer program. You press go and it runs automatically. When it comes time to change, thinking positively is going to do nothing because your body has been conditioned for the most part into a program in the past. Thought never makes it to the body because the body's on a different program. How do we begin to influence the body so that the thought actually produces some type of change? 
Think about it. If you think an unhappy thought, you're going to feel unhappy. If you think you're a failure, you're going to feel like a failure. Once you feel like a failure, you're going to think you're a failure. And people get caught in these loops of thinking and feeling and feeling and thinking. And that redundancy is a conditioning process because all you need is an image or a picture or a thought and a feeling and a response, stimulus response. And so people tend to condition their brain and body into the past. When it comes time to change, you've got to leave that familiar territory. And any choice that you make, if you said, hey, I'm going to eat a better diet, I'm going to wake up early and work out, I'm going to do meditation, the moment you decide to do something differently, get ready because it's going to feel uncomfortable. It's going to feel unfamiliar. There's going to be some uncertainty. You're not going to be able to predict the next moment. That means you've left your known biology and you're stepping into the unknown. Theoretically, that sounds great. But if the body has been conditioned into a familiar feeling, it's in the known. The moment you take it outside the familiarity, it wants to go back to where it's comfortable. Repeating it over and over again is sustaining or maintaining those connections, and that's called memory. So they memorized what they were doing by physically practicing or personalizing what they learned. Make sense? Standard simple. It took the second group of people, and they said, listen, we want you to play two hours a day for two weeks. We're going to scan your brain before and after, but you know what we're going to do? We're not going to tell you how to play anything. You just come and do whatever you want, play whatever you want. So at the end of two weeks, guess what happened to them? Nothing. You know why? Because they couldn't remember what they had learned the day before, and they couldn't remember what they played the day before, and they had no structure. They got no instruction and no knowledge to be able to apply it to make some steady circuits. It took the third group of people and they said, listen, don't even show up. Don't even create your day. Same thing. Nothing happens. Last group of people, they said, listen, we want you to come two hours a day for two weeks. We're going to show you these one-handed exercises. But instead of you physically playing the piano, we want you to mentally rehearse over and over again those exercises. We know you're going to get tired, so we'll nudge you and we'll keep you awake, but you practice for two hours a day and you keep repeating those. At the end of two weeks, they rescanned their brain and guess what happened? Same area of the brain lit up as if they were actually playing the scales. Now, you know what that means? They grew new circuits in their brain just by thinking about it, just by thinking, just by rehearsing. Now, every time we learn something new, we make new circuits in the brain. If you learn anything new, learning is making a new connection in the brain, new neurological connection. Memory is maintaining or sustaining those connections, keeping them alive. And the only way that we maintain and sustain connections in the brain is by repetition. Repetition allows the neurons to develop a long-term relationship. So these people, every single day, made it the most important thing. They gave up their social engagements. They gave up television. They said, I'm going to rehearse. I'm going to mentally rehearse the greatest ideal of myself every single day. And as long as I keep doing it every day, what's going to happen to those circuits? They're going to light up and become the more sustainable circuits to act as a platform of who they will become in the future. During this process of rehearsal, while they were sitting down rehearsing who they were going to be, just like the piano players rehearsing over and over again, they had long moments where they lost track of time and space. In other words, they became so involved with what they were doing that when they opened their eyes or they lifted up their eye masks or when they turned the lights on in the room, it was two hours later and it only seemed like five minutes. They were so involved with what they were doing that they lost the feedback of the body, they lost the feedback from the environment, and they lost track of time. And the moment that that happens, geniuses. That's the moment we walk through the door to the quantum field. And that is the moment, by the way, according to neuroscience, that we repattern and rewire the brain. And by the way, guess what part of the brain is the most active when we do that? The frontal lobe, because isn't it true that we're making thought more real than anything else in that moment? And because the frontal lobe is the orchestra leda, it has its connections to the rest of the brain. And what it does is it quiets down the association
ideation centers, the thinking centers. It quiets down the motor centers. You don't want to move. You could still. It quiets down the emotional centers. And the only thing that's real is the thought. And when we capture that thought in the frontal lobe, when the frontal lobe captures it as we hold that thought there, what happens is the rest of the neurons in the brain will pattern and make circuits to capture that thought and reflect it as a footprint of whatever we're focusing on. And when we make new circuits in our brain, by the way, do you think that we'll perceive things that maybe already existed but we never really saw? Do you think that's possible? Do you think that the person who lives practicing being a victim every day gets good at it? Turn that on automatically. Is it natural and second nature? And how will they perceive their world based on how they're wired? So if you made new circuits in your brain, do you think you may process or see things in your reality different because now you're wired to see them? Do you accept that? So if I put up a picture of a Monet on the screen up here, and I said to you, isn't that a beautiful picture of what Monet painted? You guys would all say, oh yeah, that's beautiful. And then I took the picture down and I said, did you guys know anything about Monet? Do you know that he spent 44 years of his life teaching himself how to see things differently? So many people have so many interesting definitions about what they think love is. Some people have it in terms of need. Some people have it in terms of sexuality. Some people have it in terms of control and dominance and success. And those are different experiences that really don't lead to this concept called love. And so my theory in a relationship, I was in Australia for three weeks and I was on all these television shows and all these radio shows. And by the end of this tour, I was at the establishment hotel in Sydney and I was sitting with a CNN reporter, an attractive woman. And she said, how come I can't create the relationship that I want? And I said, let me ask you a question. Would you go out with you? Which is really the fundamental question. So I have a couple of theories about relationships that I think are really important. First of all, I will never work in a relationship and I don't think anybody should work in a relationship. I think if you're working in a relationship, something is not clicking, something is not right. But if you bring your best and the person that you're with brings their best and you celebrate your life together, then there's constructive interference, there's growth, there's energy. If you're not at your best and you show up, more than likely, you're going to pick someone or something apart. And it's better that you remove yourself for a period of time and get back into your heart and present yourself at your best. And so if you're not there and you need a mirror or a reflection, then it's good to ask, am I missing something? Am I not seeing myself in some way? And then there's a healthy conversation when you invite it. But if you're not invited to contribute your opinion, then it's better off that you don't. So people always say, I want a loving relationship, but what they really want is happiness. We do these meditations to create love in our lives, and it could be love in familial relationships with your siblings. It could be with your parents. It could be with your friends. Or it could be with a significant other. If thoughts are the electrical charge in the quantum field and feelings are the magnetic charge in the quantum field and how you think and how you feel broadcasts an electromagnetic signature that influences every single atom in your life. Can you believe in a future that you can't see or experience with your senses yet, but you've thought about enough times in your mind that your brain is literally changed to look like the event has already occurred? The latest research in neuroscience says you can change your brain from living in the past to living in the future. And can you fall in love with that vision to such a degree that you come out of your resting state and change guilt or suffering into inspiration and joy and gratitude? To such a degree that your body, as the unconscious mind, does not know the difference between that external event and what you're creating internally, so that your body believes it's living in that future, in the present moment. And you begin to signal new genes in new ways to change your body to look like the event has already occurred. The latest research in epigenetics says you can change your body by thought alone. Now reason this with me. If there's physical evidence in your brain and body to look like the event has already occurred, your brain and body are no longer living in the past, they're living in the future. And you will walk right into your vision, 
something new you wanted to experience. And the moment you started thinking about this experience, the moment you started contemplating this potential reality, you turned on a part of your brain called the frontal lobe, the crowning achievement of the human being. It's 40% of your entire brain. It is the creative center. And it has connections to all other parts of the brain. And the moment you said, what would it be like to be a leader? What would it be like to be successful? What would it be like to have this vision come true? The moment you asked that open-ended question, you turned on this part of the brain because the rest of the brain is just a bunch of automatic programs. And now the frontal lobe, the creative center, wakes up and it has connections to the entire brain. It's the CEO, it's the boss, it's the symphony leader of the brain. And the moment you get creative, the frontal lobe begins to select different networks of neurons that are stored in your brain from things you've learned or experienced. And as you begin to think a what if question, it begins to select these different networks and begins to seamlessly piece them together and making your brain fire in new sequences and in new patterns and new combinations nations and whenever you make your brain work differently you're changing your mind because mind is the brain in action mind is the brain at work and the moment those neurons fire in tandem you get a picture in your mind a hologram a vision for those people who are passionate that thought that their thinking begins to create an elevated emotion they become inspired they feel enthusiastic they become passionate they started to open their hearts and all of a sudden, they're combining a clear intention with an elevated emotion. And it's the combination of a clear intention and an elevated emotion in our research over and over again that proves then the person now is changing fundamentally, changing biologically, changing internally. And their brain and body are moving from living in the past into living in the future. When you do that, when you had that moment, you came out of your resting state and then you started to write down all the things you were going to do to get to that vision, all the choices you were going to make, all of the experiences or goals you wanted to achieve, and all of the emotions and the joy you would feel. And when you were doing that, you were setting your sights towards that destiny. And then you did something really brilliant. You wrote down the choices you weren't going to make. You became aware of the behaviors you weren't going to demonstrate. You began to review certain experiences you wanted to stay away from. And then you looked at the emotions that would bring you to a lower level. And you began to separate the old self from the new self. And when you begin to do that, and you're observing the old self, it means you're no longer the program. Now you're the consciousness observing the program. And that's when you begin to objectify your subjective self. And so the moment you stop making the same choices that you always make, get ready because it's going to be uncomfortable. And that's the moment you're heading towards the new self. Do you think that you can change the circuits in your brain by thinking about it? So I did this experiment a little ways back. They took these people who never played the piano before and they separated them into four categories. And they said, listen, we're gonna scan your brains before you learn this, these, these exercises. And then we're gonna scan your brain after. And all you have to do is show up for two hours a day in practice for two weeks, okay? And just follow the instructions. 